Hi and welcome to my studio. Today I am showing you some base layer techniques and um, texture building on a canvas. It's a mixed media piece that I'm also using a, a decor transfer as a focal point. Before we start, don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell to get notifications of future videos. All my canvases I start with a layer of texture. With this canvas I used heavy gesso and a mark making tool. I apply the gesso with a craft squeegee. You don't have to use a squeegee. You can use a, an old credit card or a palette knife. Just apply the gesso fairly thick. Not so thick that it would run, but thick enough so that your texture tool can make marks. I've also used a stamp here to try and leave an indentation of marks. It wasn't very deep and it wasn't as much as I thought it would be. I did apply a thicker layer of gesso to see if it will make a difference. It wasn't what I was hoping it would be, but it still still did leave some texture. This needs to dry overnight before we do the transfer. Decor transfers are extremely versatile. It is a picture basically like an old school scrapbook rub on that's a picture on a carrier sheet it's got a backing sheet that protects it you cut the transfer out of the bigger sheet they come on massive sheets some are smaller some are bigger you cut it out then you decide on your placement you remove the backing sheet it will stick a little bit to the background then which you can then use it to keep it in place and then you take your transfer tool sometimes it's a wooden stick sometimes it's a plastic one depends on the brand and then you would just rub over the carrier sheet and the picture will release from the carrier sheet and stick to whatever background you have it on it needs to be a non-porous surface otherwise the transfer won't stick properly the way I placed my transfer, I had some of it going over the edge, some of the leaves and flowers, and that's easy. You just fold it over, rub it off, and it will stick. To see if everything is transferred, you lift it up. You see if anything is still sticking to the carrier sheet. Then you just place it back, and you keep rubbing over it. On the back of the canvas I placed a stack of magazines for a good solid sturdy surface for all the rubbing. And here we have the transfer all done. Now I'm going to add some of the smaller pieces. You can even place a transfer on top of a transfer that overlap very easily. Here I'm just playing with the placements. I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted the butterfly. I did want the text down at the bottom. I tried the butterfly everywhere. I ended up not using the butterfly and only the text. I used part of the text, cut the rest off and placed it underneath so I did use the full piece. Now for my first layer of color, I've got some greens, I've got different types of acrylic paints and I've got an all-purpose ink. I'm going to start with the all-purpose ink, but before I put that on the canvas, I want to make sure that it blends very well, so I'm spraying it with um, water. Not too much water, just a light misting of water. Use a pipette, take some of the all-purpose ink. It's a highly pigmentated ink dropping that onto the canvas and then I'm spraying with more water just to make it blend and run a little bit better and the idea is just to let the ink do its thing and let it run so it can sink into the textures that you've created in the previous stage it will also accentuate any textures so it will be darker in the crevices of the textures and lighter on the smoother areas. I've added a little bit more ink, sprayed some more water and I'm just letting it run. Now 
the color ended up a little bit too solid for my liking so I took a paper towel and I just dabbed here and there just to create like a mottled uh, effect on the background. I'm going to add some more green this time with the Finovar Impasto paint. It's quite a thick heavy body paint so I'm mixing it into the wet ink. I'm spraying with some more water just to get it blending. I'm using my fingers here to blend and I'm making marks with my fingers. Dabbing again with a paper towel just to create some more visual interest. I waited till the paint was dry then I did scribble some words on like journaling style with a pit artist pen Faber Castell brush pen. Now it's time to create the idea of more flowers. It's going to be more like a visual representation of flowers and not actual flowers. To do that I'm using an all-purpose ink I'm dropping it on the background dry then I'm adding water and then I am just spreading with my finger making little dots every dot is like the idea of a flower if I had too much ink in an area I just dabbed some of it with a paper towel next comes some alcohol inks the alcohol inks was just to mix in with the all-purpose ink you can see that it actually resists the all-purpose ink and it creates like these little halos and then for some added color I went to a yellow all-purpose ink that's just because flowers aren't normally just one solid color they're very varied in their color so I was just adding more color I kept dabbing with my finger I kept adding color till I was happy with the mix of colors I left it to dry and this is the close-up of where we are now with all the different layers. I call this the first messy stage. And next is one of a few calm down stages where I take either an acrylic ink or I take acrylic paint, mix it with water and a, use a brayer and I just go over all the very heavy areas and I just push them back into the background a little bit like toning them down a little bit this also picks up on texture on the background and emphasizes that I keep toning down till I feel that the background is not overpowering the focal point anymore I do touch on to the flowers in the focal point, decide against it and then turn them down again. I am going to paint over them a little later. This is what I would call the base layer, the start layer of the painting. And from here you will build on further, you'll build on to your flowers, paint them on, collage them on. You'll notice in the next stage that I have collaged on some flowers. Then I'm going to start painting on some flowers. So here I just show you what I've been using to paint on the flowers. I've got acrylic paints. These are heavy body paints. You'll see in the background some of the flowers have been collaged on. So I'm just taking a mix of colors that are already in the transfer. So the same flower colors that are in the transfer is the same flower colors that I'm going to create for the background flowers. To create the flowers, I use different sizes and shapes of brushes. I pick up two to three colors of paint on the brush at the same time, mixing in between colors, using darker and lighter tones. And I make little C shapes around the collaged flowers and around the little dots that I want to become flowers. And this is not realistic flowers, I'm just creating the idea of flowers. So it's just the idea of petals around the dots and collaged flowers. Here I've swapped to a larger round brush to create bigger dots and petals and I'm also adding a different color and I just carry on like this and I make what I call my second messy stage. It's going to get very heavy and very overpowering 
and it's going to need another calm down stage. I will do a separate video where I show you in detail how I create these roses. I did end up painting over some of the roses in the transfer. It just felt like they needed to be a little bit more matching with the other flowers. From here I just repeated the calm down stage, neatened up my flowers and in the final product you'll see there's layers and layers of beautiful visual texture. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.